welcome to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And this is season five, episode eight. And it's called The Desert and the Deserted. And um, I will say this. Um, so okay, most of the episodes leading up to this episode to me has been like eight or higher. I'm gonna give this episode a seven. Um and the reason I'm giving it a seven is not much happened until towards the end of the episode. Um, there was a lot of milling about, in my opinion. And also, too, there's just certain people on the show. They don't need to be on the show anymore. I'm just kind of done. I'm kind of over it. Um, also, too, it's the fact that watching the after show, there was more story coming from the after show than the actual show when it comes to that particular cast member. For me, it's like, okay, if you are not opening up on the show and you don't really have a storyline on this show, it's time for you to go. So I'm going to get into the episode. This shouldn't be too long. And then we'll um, go from there. So the episode starts with Meredith and Lisa. They are having a spa day and Heather meets them up, meets up with them little bit after the spa day to kind of recap what happened between um Bronwyn so because Meredith tells Lisa before they meet up that Heather and Bronwyn are not good and then Lisa mentions that she has an issue with Bronwyn at the moment which makes no sense at all but Lisa is making everything about her because that's what she does and um and it's all about this couple's trip. So um, basically, <sighs> what's bothering me about this whole entire thing is just the fact that Heather is still pretending and still in her own delusion. She uninvited herself to this trip, number one. Number two, she keeps calling it a friendship trip. This is not a friendship trip. This is a couple's trip. And you ain't got nobody. So there would be no reason for you to go. So there's multiple reasons why this was not going to be a thing for you, but yet you are making it more than what it should be. And um, the other thing that we find out that's a new revelation this episode is that Lisa and Meredith are just blindly taking Heather's side. Now with Meredith, it's not that surprising because Meredith and Heather are literally like, they are the closest on this show and they kind of pretty much have like an alliance basically. Um, but with Lisa, yeah, but with Lisa, um, that, that was actually the new revelation that took place this episode. Um, Lisa is blindly taking Heather's side and, um, we saw that this was happening when it came to the situation with Angie, but it's deeper than that. Like it's just happening across the board now. And I think, I mean, really it boils down to Heather is such a pick me. She is kissing, um, you know, Lisa's behind similar to basically how Heather was, you know, kissing, um, Jen's behind before. So yeah, Lisa's not going to break that, break that, that bond that she has that she, like this, basically having a yes woman she's not going to break that not for bronwyn not for anyone and bronwyn basically effed around and found out the hard way that that's what's going on and um so also too even lisa twisted what bronwyn said to her because bronwyn called in to check to make sure everything was everything for the trip making sure that um you know lisa's okay with whitney and Justin coming on the trip. And I think in Lisa's defense, but not really, um, Lisa won't just outright say that she does not want um, Bronwyn to be friends with people that she has a problem with, but that's what it is. Um, Cause you even notice with like um, Heather, Heather and Whitney, they're okay now, but they're not really cool anymore. They really are only cool because really we were we as an audience were sick of them too beefing because their beef was stupid and no one cared and i kind of feel this way even when it comes to um heather stirring the pot and all that but that's neither here nor there so 
this is kind of basically the Easter egg of what the whole entire episode is about. And I guess that's why I didn't really love the episode. I was actually kind of bored with it because it was just about this for the most part. There was nothing else going on. Um, so anyway, um, the other thing that comes up when it comes to all this conflict is that uh, Meredith um, is not looking forward to seeing Angie because she's still just wanting to keep this beef between Sean, like Sean and Angie a thing when it's like, hello, the olive branch was already set and Meredith isn't taking any accountability about her being shady at the party um, while during the anniversary party or the fact that she actually did perpetuate spreading rumors, even though she may not have been the one who started the rumors, which really I think she kind of did with um, Vontis, um, reality Vontis, but like she's not going to own up to it. So it's a case of just like, and, and then also too, um, Meredith is accusing Sean of bringing Brooks into it, her son, into the beef. But if you go back ne last season, that was literally Meredith's cop out of her not starting the rumors about Sean being, you know, possibly family was because she she basically said she would never do that because her son is of the family. So it really was Meredith who brought that to the forefront and brought the son up. But then basically when Sean re-brought it up in the podcast, what Meredith says, now Meredith is now trying to spin it and saying that Sean brought her son into it when Meredith herself is the one who brought the son into it. But anyway. Um, that kind of got brought up and it kind of, we kind of got a reminder of it during the after show as well, because I didn't really remember that that happened that way until the after show. And I guess, so the other thing that I'm going to mention before we get into the trip is honestly, speaking of Meredith, Meredith can go. Um, I don't care about her storyline, her and Seth. Um, and I'm not going to go in any particular order when it comes to this episode, but her and Seth, end up um, having, we find out they're having issues because of his job and how much he works. But that has been an issue this whole entire time she been, she's been on the show. That is like not a new issue. It hasn't gotten resolved. And I feel like that's kind of a backup storyline for the other storyline that because she also mentioned the whole bar mitzvah thing. And honestly, like we know that's for the show. Like, it, it just doesn't seem real or genuine. And so for me, Meredith is kind of just really boring for me, other than her moments that she has. Either, for me, Meredith should either get demoted to friend of or just, like, leave the show because there's really no purpose for her. And even though her and Seth had conflict, I was bored. I didn't care. Anyway. So... Pretty much what happened, so after, um, and, and that happened during the trip, because what actually what ended up happening is, fast forward, they get to the trip, and um, Seth originally agreed to go on the trip, but then he turns around, like, that same day, is like, yeah, I gotta leave first thing in the morning, and because he's working, and so the work schedule thing comes up again, and again, like, no one really cares about this, I mean, at least I don't, I wasn't interested, and the after show is the only time where we find out the full context of what is happening here because Meredith doesn't really open up ever about her real life. So to me, it's like, why are you on the show if you're not going to explain what's really going on? I don't want to have to watch the after show to know what is going on with you or the context of it. So that's kind of the other reason why I'm just like, I think I'm done with her being on the show. No, um, we do get a brief Mary appearance and it really is just the fact that Mary is not going on the um, show, not going on the trip. She basically states that she has something going on with um, Robert Jr. And so, yeah, she's not, she's not going. And so that's the only time we see Mary this episode. And I think that's the other thing that was missing this episode. I'm sorry, producers, you do not do too... <laughs> I don't know why they do. They did two weeks uh, in a row of no Mary. Like Mary is, I mean, Bronwyn can't carry the show by herself. We need a Mary with it. Like, come on now. Anyway, so 
Um, fast forward, all the couples are getting ready and they go on the private plane that Bronwyn put together. Also, Todd did warn Bronwyn before the trip, like, look, if there's any drama, I'm done with it. Like, I I'm not going to do this. And Bronwyn's like, no drama. That's, that's not what's going to happen. Um, even though we know it's a housewife show, it's bound to happen. But Todd is putting his foot down. And side note, Todd right now has become my favorite husband so easily because of this episode. But we'll get there. Anyway, so the ladies all do end up going on the trip. They take a private plane that um, Bronwyn and Todd put together. And right away, Meredith and Lisa are just being, they're making a point to like talk about Heather and basically not really give anything, not give Bronwyn the um, voice to be able to state her opinion on how they're, they fell out and how things didn't work out. And really, Brittany was afterthought. No one thought about Brittany, um, which on the after show, Brittany was so surprised by that. I was like, girl, the delusion. But anyway. And so, um, yeah. So Bronwyn's already seen the play, but she's trying to be optimistic about it. And um, yeah, she's right. She It turns out she's going to be right about it. And fast forward, immediately, once everyone gets to the property, the property's beautiful. It's amazing. But we have literally Seth, Meredith, Lisa, and John. They go off on the complete opposite side of the wing of this large house and just ignore the hostess and host. And it's just quite rude and disrespectful. And really, this whole entire episode, Lisa was just a self-absorbed little bitch. Like, that's how she acted the whole entire episode, truthfully. And I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm also not, you know, someone who mints words. But that's how she was the whole entire episode. Um, and Bronwyn the whole entire time felt hurt. She felt offended. And that's kind of what was happening there. But fortunately, she had Angie and Brittany who had her back. So, um... I, I mean, honestly, when it comes to the Lisa, Heather, and Meredith situation, if you really look at the landscape of it, it's such the wrong road because, I mean, you have Whitney and Angie together, and you know Angie and Mary are friends, and then now you have Bronwyn on that side of the house, too? Yeah. But anyway, there's a divide, a clear divide, and honestly, they're unevenly matched. Um, Mary being on your, on your side is enough where you're just finished. That's just what it is. And I don't, I don't understand why they don't, don't know that, but they're delusional. So that's what it is. But anyway, so the guys decide to help break the ice and the guys are getting along just fine for the most part. Um, because, oh, also the other elephant in the room is that now, um, Whitney's aware that, um, Mary, not, Whitney is aware that Lisa wants an apology from Justin and Justin along with Whitney both agree. No, we're not doing that. And, and, but Whitney takes a step further. Like, uh, no, he actually, she, he, she actually owes Justin an apology. So that's the other issue that's happening. And, but again, as a result, it took them a while for all of them to get together, at least the guys, because of even that. Um, they do eventually all start hanging out and, you know, doing their own thing. And um, Angie, being the icebreaker, decides, okay, let's get some Vila tequila, which is um, Lisa's liquor, and let me pour shots for everyone. And so the women all do eventually congregate together in, like, kind of a hot tub situation. And everything seemed to be good for a second, um, but then the Heather thing got brought up again and Bronwyn had to go use a restroom and immediately, and I mean immediately after she went to the restroom, Lisa takes it upon herself to call Heather and FaceTime Heather on Bronwyn's trip. That is a couple's trip. And so Bronwyn feels completely disrespected because she catches it when she gets back. And then that is when Bronwyn goes off and 
Lisa had nothing to say. Lisa kept fighting back, but Lisa just is not a wordsmith, so it wasn't, it was not going to happen. And Bronwyn just kind of just started it and finished it and um, said what she needed to say. And then she ended up storming off because she was so upset and so offended that basically Lisa and uh, Meredith this whole entire time have been hijacking the couple's trip um, and making it about them and making it about Heather. And Meredith is kind of in her own delusion, like thinking, but we miss Heather. Like, I, I don't understand what the problem is. It's like, but this is not your trip though. Um, but Meredith does say like in, in the after show, she's like, well, it's not like Heather, we may Heather have Heather show up anyway, because it happened to Meredith before. But at the same time, your, tr your cast trip, Meredith versus Bronwyn's cast trip, the, the, the money ain't money in quite the same. So like, let's not do that. Like that was disrespectful. And um, Bronwyn called it. She's like, you know, they're being rude when like, they literally got a free trip on me and they did all that. That's team too much. That's not okay. That's, that's not it. Because in both cases, when Meredith was talking about what happened last season, when it came to Palm, Palm Springs, yeah, Bronwyn's trip, the budget's different. I like, it just is. So anyway, um, so Lisa is still just making it about her and basically thinks that after all this is said and done, that her, Bronwyn and Heather are going to become friends and then they will need to apologize to her. And it's like, no, they're not going to become friends. You, you are very dumb if you think that is what, how this is going to end. And what is killer about this whole entire situation is that Lisa could do the same thing Meredith did, which was not get as involved, but Lisa is making everything about her. And she has, I mean, for seasons now, but at least this time now, she has the right one in the, when it comes to Bronwyn and Bronwyn is just getting her together, like easily. So basically after Bronwyn's upset though, and goes away and goes back inside to kind of get her, gather her thoughts, um, Whitney does go with her, check on her. And, um, you could tell side note, Whitney actually does like Bronwyn. So, or she doesn't, there at least is an alliance there. So Bronwyn is bad. So this is good. This is actually a good thing. And, um, also too. So after she vents to, um, Whitney, Todd comes out because Todd this whole entire time is getting aggravated because he's like, okay, now the volume has gotten elevated. And I said at the very beginning, I'm not going for this. I'm, we're not doing this on a trip. This is just what we're not going to do. And so, um, he basically calls out and says, look, we're not doing it. We're not doing this. This is not what we're going to do. And either they tone it down or they can leave. Like, Really, I think originally it was going to be because Todd actually threatened to leave himself, but like Brown was like, no, 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 no. I think they should probably go. But I will, at first, it was kind of confusing. I don't know if his editing job went wrong. I thought Brown was going to be the one who said something, but instead, Todd actually ended up going to um, John, um, you know, Lisa's husband, say, hey, Y'all either tone it down or like y'all can leave. And, um, cause we're not doing this. And John relays a message to Lisa and Lisa of course overreacts as she always does, but that is kind of where the episode ends though. So I don't know what else happened there. I'm assuming Lisa does end up leaving though, but, um, yeah. Lisa and Bronwyn are not in a good place anymore. And it's because Lisa does not know how to be a good friend. And Lisa still does not understand that she's a horrible friend. <laughs> like, um, Lisa is still stating that it's Whitney and like, cause on the after show, this actually comes up in the after show. She's talking to Brittany and she's saying that no, it's Whitney and Angie getting in like Bronwyn's ear. And it's like, girl, you could tell that Bronwyn's an independent thinker, so it's not that. And um, 
Also, even Lisa tried to say that like Bronwyn never checked up on her and the producers roll the footage that she she has like literally the whole entire time, but just has not been reciprocated. But we already knew Lisa was a problem. So like, that's not surprising, but I guess this is kind of where the episode ends. I mean, I mean, that is where the episode ends, but you can understand why I don't really, didn't really love this episode because outside of this conflict, nothing really happened. And I'm just kind of sick of Lisa get, like interjecting and putting herself in everything. And I kind of also wish Mary would have been there because I think Mary would have gotten the girls together. Um, I know Bronwyn's getting them together, but I think Mary would have like dead it when it came to like Lisa because um, especially without Heather being there. Oh yeah, it would have been dead it. Um, because Lisa and Heather and even like Meredith, they all just love to gaslight. Um, and they're just, I don't know. I just, mm, I don't like this alliance. It's kind of trash and corny. And they're also the alliance. It's like the alliance of people who don't have like a storyline. Um, other than Le Lisa kind of has a storyline, but like she's just doing the most. Um, but anyway, that does conclude the episode. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. And I apologize, my sound might be a little bit off um, towards the second half of this video because my mic went out. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka Mel Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.